habits are kind of making a comeback, aren't they? With so many people now adopting a remote lifestyle, whether for work or for school, this form factor is something I think anyone can benefit from. More powerful than a phone, but still a lot lighter than a laptop. Who wouldn't want that? And it can't be argued that one of the most popular tablets out there would have to be the iPad. But what if I wanted something that wasn't Apple? Or maybe I wanted something a little less expensive, but with similar features and capabilities. Well, that's what Huawei wants to give its users with the all-new MatePad Pro 11, which we have right here. Hey guys, it's Vika, you're with The Modern Creatures, and welcome to another video. Announced just a couple of weeks ago, the MatePad Pro now comes in this more compact 11-inch form factor, and it boasts of streamlined and upgraded features, especially for productivity and creativity. Let's check them out. Tablets are designed to be mobile, so it's only right we start with build and portability. While both can fit easily into most bags, the MatePad Pro comes in as the more compact pick. Despite being both 11-inch tablets, we can see the visible difference in size between the two. The MatePad Pro even boasts of being the lightest 11-inch tablet in its segment at just 449 grams. But beyond all those specs and all those numbers, I just personally find the MatePad Pro size a better fit for my not-so-big hands. I can easily grip it with one hand like this, no problem. Being able to hold the tablet like this also made me appreciate the thin bezels. With the iPad Pro, you're getting a device with a familiar form factor. Again, we both have 11-inch tablets here, but we can see that the iPad Pro extends its bezels quite a bit more than the MatePad Pro. This extra space does come in handy though as it becomes a place to hold the tablet without fear of accidentally tapping on the screen. I find it's just not as stable to use with one hand, however, especially when you're using a stylus. For design, both tablets are elegant looking with good heft. The MatePad Pro 11 debuts with an all-new design for its back. Huawei has now integrated a frosting processing technique, resulting in this metallic sheen, making it look a little more premium than your average tablet. Fingerprints aren't easily seen on either device, but you'll probably have a case on them all the time anyway. Additionally, Huawei says the back is also wear-resistant. Now that we've seen the differences in size and design, let's move on to display. For the MatePad Pro 11, Huawei intros a new 11-inch OLED color full-view display, which, according to the company, is its best OLED display yet. Interestingly, this is actually the only tablet to offer an OLED panel in this price segment. On Apple's side, we have a similarly sized 11-inch Liquid Retina IPS panel. Both offer a high 120Hz refresh rate, which make for buttery smooth animation and a P3 wide color gamut for true-to-life color reproduction. As mentioned earlier, the MatePad Pro 11 offers thinner bezels that result in a higher screen-to-body ratio of 92%. With this number, Huawei can claim to have the highest screen-to-body ratio for a tablet in this size. In addition to that, the MatePad Pro 11 comes with Tuv Rhineland Full Care Display 3.0 certification, which is the most comprehensive certification for mobile smart devices today, another world's first for a tablet. In comparing image quality, we can see how the MatePad Pro's OLED panel slightly overtakes the iPad Pro in terms of contrast and sharpness. In this sample photo, we can visibly see that the MatePad Pro 11 offers deeper blacks and vibrant colors overall. While accuracy seems on point for both, images and videos for the MatePad Pro 11 are slightly richer and more detailed. And again, these thin bezels just enhance the overall viewing experience, especially when streaming movies or shows. Tablets aren't the newest form factor around, but what we've recently been seeing are more ways to make them more comfortable to use, less like a smartphone and more like a laptop. This is done through accessories, and the most popular pairing would have to be a keyboard and stylus. For the iPad Pro, we have the Apple Pencil and Smart Keyboard Folio on hand, while for the MatePad Pro 11, we have the detachable Smart Magnetic Keyboard and the new second-generation M Pencil. 
Apple Smart Keyboard Folio is your basic keyboard case which offers two viewing angles and, of course, protection. If you want something a little more full-featured, you can opt to go for Apple's Magic Keyboard instead, but both cases do fetch a pretty penny on top of the already expensive tablet. On Huawei's side, we have something a little more interesting. Apart from serving its purpose as a protective case, the detachable smart magnetic keyboard actually hides a hidden floating antenna that boosts your device's signal and helps to keep your Wi-Fi connection stable. The case also offers three modes. First is your usual laptop mode. Next, we have split mode where you can detach the top part of the case. What's great about split mode is that you can still use the keyboard even when it's not attached. Finally, we have studio mode which I've come to really love. Once detached, you can prop up the tablet by flipping the bottom part of the case. Since I use the M Pencil quite a bit, this angle is absolutely perfect for me. You can also immediately prop it upright in case of a video call, which is really convenient. Included in this case as well is a little detachable compartment for the M Pencil that you can stick on the back. I did find the fit a little too snug for the stylus, but it has loosened up a bit since I've been using it. Hopefully it loosens up a little bit more so it'll be easier to take the stylus out. Like the previous MatePad Pro, you can magnetically attach the stylus up here. You can also do it with the iPad, of course, and both will charge their styluses once attached. Now we're not going to go in-depth in comparing these styluses as I found they performed quite similarly. Let's first start with the M Pencil since it's obviously received a design overhaul. Compared to the previous generation, the new M Pencil now more closely resembles the Apple Pencil, save for the pen tip. Both styluses also share similar features that help give a natural feeling when writing or drawing. The Apple Pencil claims to have no latency input and it definitely shows. The M Pencil, on the other hand, claims to have low latency instead. You can see here when drawing side by side, the M Pencil does trail ever so slightly, but the difference isn't too drastic in my opinion. Palm rejection on both devices also worked flawlessly. For productivity, I found the Huawei M Pencil offered more features that I was able to use in my day-to-day -day tasks. We do have identical offerings such as FreeScript for Huawei and Scribble for Apple. These allow handwritten inputs whether for notes, browsing, or even for filling up forms. Where the two differ are its double tap feature. With the Apple Pencil, you can select what you want to happen when you double tap the stylus, but this only works for certain apps and the actions are more inclined to creatives. With Huawei's M Pencil, double tap brings up a floating menu that allows you to take snippets or annotate anywhere on the page. This became an incredibly useful tool when I needed to save information from a website for example, or even jot down revisions on a script. Now that we've seen a couple of their differences, let's check out how they perform and see if the MatePad Pro can keep up with the iPad Pro. We can't deny that the iPad Pro is powerful with its M1 processor, but like many, if not all Apple products, the prime performance comes with a much higher price. The Huawei MatePad Pro 11, however, comes with a Snapdragon 870 chip that still offers incredible performance but will have you shutting out just a little less. Quick note, this is the LTE variant of the MatePad Pro 11 that comes with the Snapdragon 888 processor, but Huawei has confirmed that in the Philippines, only the Wi-Fi variant with the 870 processor will be available. Where I use these tablets most was for organizing and keeping up to date with my daily tasks, answering emails, revising scripts, taking video calls, and the occasional photo and video edits when on the go. As mentioned in an earlier video, I like having a dashboard of sorts that can display my daily to-dos or tasks at a glance. Both devices are able to accomplish this through widgets. The MatePad Pro 11 comes with the all-new Harmony OS 3, which further develops its productivity features that sort of put it at par with some of the iPad's capabilities. We now have widget stacks that allow you to group together similarly sized widgets that you can cycle through by swiping. One of my favorite improvements would have to be the new way you can access floating windows and split screens. You can now simply tap and hold instead of having to go through the sidebar like before. For my usual lineup of apps, especially for tablets, I need a capable word processor, all the social media of course, a digital notebook or sketchbook, and some creative tools for photo or video editing. 
For the iPad Pro, I've come to use GoodNotes and Procreate, while on the MatePad Pro 11, I've come to use Huawei Notes and Mojang Paint. Having a keyboard on both devices made it much easier to work on articles with either GoodNotes or Huawei Notes. I do like the feel of Huawei's keyboard a tad bit more because of the clickiness and slightly bigger keys, though this may well be just a personal preference. Both also offer shortcuts for easier navigation. On the iPad Pro, I have no complaints in using GoodNotes as my scribble journal, but I'm also pleasantly surprised at how Huawei's native Notes app offers a similar experience. I can easily insert images, move and resize elements, change the paper at any time, and more. The difference being is that Huawei Notes is completely free and it comes pre-installed. There is a free version of GoodNotes that limits you to three notebooks, but Huawei Notes gives you a whole bunch. It's really a bonus for someone like me who wants a full-featured app without spending extra. Additionally, we also have WPS Office, which is a great word processing app that I've actually been using in place of words or pages for a while now. What I like most is that it offers features like PDF conversion and other useful tools that help in dealing with my daily tasks. With Harmony OS 3, Huawei also introduces cross-app and cross-device color capture. This feature offers the ability to pick out a color from anywhere on the tablet, whether it be an image or even if it's from your phone. If you have Huawei Notes open, for example, you can split your screen and bring up reference photos on the other side. You can then easily pick out the colors that you want to use. Through Super Device, you can even use this feature with a compatible Huawei phone. You can pick out colors and get the exact shade you want from photos without even needing to transfer them to the tablet. If you're an artist, it also works with Mojang Paint, also free and an app gallery exclusive. It's a pretty suitable alternative to Procreate if you're not on an Apple device. These creative features really partner well with the case's studio mode. Again, as someone who uses the stylus as much as or even more than the keyboard, I really appreciate the viewing angles that studio mode gives you because it's easier to work with the stylus. And like I said earlier, it's really convenient that I can prop it up anytime for video calls. And speaking of video calls, let's jump into talking about these cameras. Video calls or meetings have become integral in today's working culture, and I personally like taking them on either a laptop or a tablet since I find a phone screen too limiting, especially if you want to chat or do other features, and especially if there are a lot of participants. Quality-wise, the MatePad Pro 11 16-megapixel front-facing camera produces cleaner and more detailed photos and videos. Here we are. These are the sample videos from the front-facing cameras of these tablets. With the wider aspect ratio, we have the MatePad Pro 11 over here, and here is the iPad Pro. Now, you, are, you can already see a vast difference in color. Huawei's is much more vibrant, but I do like the iPads because it's much more natural. Though there is a lot of green and noise on here, especially in the darker parts of the photo, like my hair over here or some shadows down in the back of the background. While over here in Huawei, it is a clearer picture. Uh, we can see some software enhancements on my skin, which is great for me. I honestly like that having this because it means I don't have to fix up too much when I have a video call or things like that. Beauty filters and added convenience if you ask me, although I know it's not for everybody. Now, in terms of audio, I have not heard the audio from these tablets as I am recording right now. But you guys can hear it. I'll be switching it from different tablets and post. And then you guys let me know. Which one you like better? Is it this Mate Pad Pro 11 or the iPad Pro's audio? We'll figure it out. But for now, let's just move on to the rest of the video. As for the rear cameras, I mostly use these for documentation and not as a daily snapper. Both devices provide more than enough detail for this kind of use. Finally, for productivity, let's talk about inter-device connectivity. If you're already in the Apple ecosystem, you can readily enjoy many of its seamless multi-device features. The same goes for Huawei. We've covered Super Device more extensively in other videos, but if you do have compatible Huawei devices, you'll find it's easy to transfer, operate, and communicate. Something that's really useful if you're on the go and jump from device to device. Apart from productivity, there are a good number of users who also value features for entertainment. It doesn't come as a surprise to me that the iPad Pro produces gorgeous sounding and detailed audio as Apple has been consistent with good audio quality across its devices. 
For the first time, Huawei Sound is now available on the MatePad Pro. Though still not as balanced as the iPad Pro, Huawei's tablet this year does show obvious improvement. We have two tweeter and four woofers that take charge in producing full sound. We also have additional features like Huawei AI noise reduction and two-step echo cancellation which contribute to cleaner voice pickup during video calls. Finally, let's talk about these batteries. On the MatePad Pro 11, we have a large 8300mAh battery with support for 40W supercharge. On the 11-inch iPad Pro, we have a 7,538 mAh battery with support for 20W fast charging. In my time, both tablets could last up to two days or even longer depending on usage. For charging, the MatePad Pro 11 comes out faster, topping out its bigger battery in a little over an hour, while the iPad Pro took almost two hours. In my time with both devices, I've come to realize a couple of things. The iPad Pro is popular and highly regarded for good reason. It's one of the tablets that can easily and successfully bridge that gap between smartphone and laptop. But again, the key disadvantage, like most Apple products out there, is the cost. Since I'm not purely on an Apple ecosystem, I've found much satisfaction with this year's MatePad Pro 11, especially when partnered with that new detachable magnetic case and the new M Pencil second generation. And let's not forget its rich OLED display which is uncommon in this segment. With many features of the iPad Pro having its own version on the MatePad Pro 11, it becomes a great tablet to pick up for creativity or productivity. Through Huawei's super device, multi-screen collaboration, cross-device capabilities, and other features, you can further unlock the MatePad Pro 11's functionality as a productivity tablet. If you plan on picking up the MatePad Pro 11, there are current pre-order promos that bundle the keyboard and M pencil for free. More details in the description box below. And that's all for today's MatePad Pro 11 and iPad Pro comparison. I hope you guys picked up some things while watching this video. And if you did, why not share them in the comment section below. And as usual, if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to our channel, visit our website and our other social media pages for more news, features, and reviews. Once again, this is Vika. Thanks for joining me, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.